Dynamic microphones are the simplest and most sturdy types that you can get. They work really well for environments where there is a, a high SPL, a high sound pressure level, like a screaming singer or right next to a snare drum or something like that, or a loud guitar uh, amp. Now a condenser mic like this guy here is designed a little differently and they're a little bit more delicate. You might generally see these more in recording studios than on stage, though there are a number of the uh, the more sturdy ones that have come out recently. Great for you know making up pianos, things like that. If a smooth, high frequency response is important, then a condenser mic is probably the way to go. Uh, for instance, on say the overhead of a drum kit where you want to bring up the shimmer of those cymbals, then a condenser mic. Uh, would be my choice. Not particularly this one, but uh, in, you know, to give you the kind of idea. If a loud snare drum, then probably a dynamic here. And one thing to note is the condenser mic does need to have power to operate them. Dynamic mics are passive. You just plug them in and play. Condenser mics either need a built-in battery or maybe phantom power supplied uh, through your mixing board. We'll look at mic selection and placement in its own section in the setting up of the, of the stage uh, part of the course soon. I just want to kind of give you a quick look uh, while we're here. There are handheld mics for vocalists, overhead hanging mics for choirs, clip-on lavaliers for people doing speaking engagements, even head-worn ones that are barely visible. All of these mics are engineered for a specific application and like I said, we'll look at their selection and also placement in the setting up the stage section uh, it, in a moment. Now one thing to consider is whether you are going to be going wired or wireless. Some applications lend themselves to wireless, others frankly don't. I mean there's little to be gained by using wireless mics on a drum kit that doesn't move, doesn't go anywhere, just plug up some wired microphones and run the cables and you're good to go. But it's another thing with a vocalist who's running all over the stage, great thing for a wireless system. Wireless systems are somewhat expensive, so you probably don't want to invest in more than you need. And a system consists of a transmitter and a receiver. Normally, a microphone is connected to your snake that goes out to your mixer position here. A wireless mic transmits through the air and is picked up by the receiver, which in then is in turn connected through to your mixer. As you want the distance between your transmitter and receiver to be as short as possible, I would normally like to have all my receivers out there on stage. So to keep that line of sight you know, very short, you normally have a line going out of your mixer, just connect the output of your receiver on stage. And then coming up here, just like that wired uh, mic would be, and you're away. If for some reason you don't have a spare line on that snake that goes from the stage here to the mixer, you could place the receiver right here next to your mixer in the, you know, the middle of the room. The only downside here is you've increased the distance between your transmitter on stage and your receiver right here and you might start getting some interference.